Robert, how are you doing? I'm good. Yourself? Uh, very well, thank you. Very well. Um, good to see you finally in red. Um, I know it's something that you've been itching to do. At the start of the year, you were still playing non-league. How have you found it? How's this week been? Yeah, it's been a... Uh, sometimes I've got to pinch myself to make sure I'm not, it's not all a dream. But um, oh, I'm enjoying it. You know, I'm seeing some of the boys I used to play with on FIFA not long ago to now playing right, standing right next to them. So, yeah, it's, it's an amazing feeling. Uh, even my mum came down today to see me and, yeah, you can see on, by her facial expressions how, how proud she is and how happy she is I'm around here. Now, your mum's from Newport, still lives in Newport as well, is that right, Robert? Um, well, she's, like, up and down. Like, she tries to go back home to Essex, but... I think she enjoys it more up here. All her family's up here, so I think she enjoys it more up here. So is it something that you've always had in your mind to, to represent Wales, if possible? Yeah, I've always said from like a young boy, like I've always said I'd always want to play for Wales. Uh, I've got no interest to play anywhere else other than Wales. So the fact that, you know I mean, like Rob Page has gone to watch me play and then obviously sitting here right now in the Wales polo is just a dream come true, really. Yeah, I had to tell him from early, like, there's a few mistakes here that got to, got to be changed. I mean, jokes aside, it has been a heck of a, a journey for you. You were at West Ham as a youngster, released, chucked your boots in the bin at one point. I think you were briefly as a scaffolder. Talk us through some of that. Yeah, it's obviously, it's a period where, as a young boy, you always feel like when you're at West Ham or the Chelsea's or anything like that, you always feel like, you're a good footballer, you're going to be a pro footballer. But then being told you're not good enough is kind of just a smack in the face in a way. So for me, that was the first I've ever been told I weren't good enough. So yeah, for me, I sort of like, I didn't really take it well, didn't really want to play football anymore, like you said. Um, and then, yeah, it was just trying to find, I kind of just fell out of love with, with the game, trying to look at plan Bs and it's just, by like talking to your friends, talking to your family, like they see how much I really did love football and only ever wanted to be a pro footballer. So getting back on the horse was kind of hard. I had to start like a little Sunday league team for like a few months just to try to gain a bit of confidence and try to find the love again. And then, yeah, I've gone to Boreham Wood and the success started there really. Yeah, of course. Obviously, I always back my ability 100%. I always feel like I can play in any team. Um, for me, having that self-belief can, can be a good thing or it can be a bad thing. But I'm a very realistic person as well. So I like to feel like I can bring something different to any team I play for. And yeah, hopefully bring the, the, the different style that I bring to the world squad. Um, I haven't really spoke to them personally. I'd love to have a have a little chat with them one day, but uh, who knows what could happen in the future. But yeah, of course, obviously I look at their journeys and people like Jamie Vardy. It's it's one of the journeys where, as a kid, obviously when I was first coming through, I never really used to believe in uh, do do big teams even look at this league. And but now looking at it, I feel like there's a lot of respect now on the national league. There's a lot of good talent coming from that league. And yeah, I just look at Jamie Vardy, I look at Ashley Williams, you look at Antonio, like these players were in non-league and now they're top players in their career. Vardy and Antonio are doing unbelievable in the Premier League. It's, yeah, it's just one of the ones just kind of following their footsteps really, but create your own path. Oh, ooh. 
don't know. I've, I've had some cold days of doing the scaffold trying to pick up them poles, but yeah, obviously I'm I'm buzzing. I can't wait. I'm so excited to even just to be called up was was a dream come true. But to put the the jersey on and and just play for them, it's yeah, it'll probably be a moment I'll probably never ever forget in my life. So uh, get busy doing in the anthem. Best of luck, enjoy it. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. And Lawrence Mara. Hiya, Sobe. How you doing? I'm good. Yourself? Yeah, very decent, very decent. Um, well, I'll start there with Chris's last question. How is the anthem learning going? It's, it's getting there. It's getting there. It's getting there. I'm, I've got it blazing in my AirPods, so hopefully I can memorise it all by the game. Oh, good stuff, good stuff. Uh, but listen, I, I just want to take you back to the start of the, your time at Huddersfield, because it, it didn't... It wasn't well, it didn't seem like it was plain sailing when you first went in there. A lot of sort of substitute appearances and things like that. Or was that just a kind of bedding in process? What, what was going on there? Um, just going off, obviously with Huddersfield, it was um, they had a system called the B team. So it's kind of a system where um, if a signing that who's young comes in, it's, it doesn't put a lot of pressure on them. So for me, it was obviously coming high flying from Bournemouth, playing week in week out, playing well. For me, I felt like I could go straight in, but going from almost three times a week to literally almost seven times a week of playing football, it's a massive change. And for me, realization kind of hit me, and it was kind of one of the ones I was frustrated because obviously I want to play, I want to play, but at the same time, I felt like for them it was a bit of a process. Obviously, coming from non-league, some people are gonna hit it running, but for me, I always said, especially after the last game at Reading. I said to one of the coaches that next year is going to be my year. I'm going to come back pre-season. You're going to you're going to see literally a whole new player, and uh, thankfully I backed up my talk. Yeah, you came back early, didn't you, for, uh, for yeah. pre-season, just so you could get a flying run at it. Yeah, exactly. Well, what was the thought process there? Was that sort of in discussion with the club, or was that you you sort of grabbing the ball by the horns? Um, it was a suggestion from the club, like if anyone wants to come back early, do you know what I mean that it's off your own back. But for me, it was always about trying to get one step ahead of everyone because they've all had a championship um, pre-season. I haven't. So I needed to know what I was kind of going in for. Um, obviously, kept myself um, fit in the off-season. Obviously, down here in Wales, down in um, Porth Core. So, yeah, down there, trying to do my runs by the beach. Obviously, it's not like I'd be for where you're running in the sun. I was running while it's freezing cold. Um, but it just—it was kind of like my own bat, really. Just try to come back, come fit, and just give the manager a headache for the whole preseason. It's a fourth call and rest day for a bit of preseason. <laughs> Sounds pretty good to me. Uh, but what was the um, what was the moment at Boreham Wood that really clicked for you? Do you think? What was the moment where you thought, "Oh, oh yeah, this is happening for me now"? Um, I'll probably say um, we had a game not last season, like not my last season, the season before. We played Yeovil away. And it wasn't really working for us in the first half. And in the second half, the manager changed it and he put me as a left wing back. And I felt like from there, I felt like everyone kind of knew who I was because they kind of saw a different side to myself um, in a position that obviously not my f main position, but I played it as if it was a main position as a left winger. So yeah, I just played a lot of joy, a lot of smile on my face. and. Obviously, then the following season, I started to hear speculations here, speculations there. But for me, I kind of just kept my feet on the ground, tried to stay as focused as I could. And then being told on New Year's Eve that you're signing for Huddersfield, it's literally had me speechless in the room. And if that had you speechless, what was the conversation like when you got told about Wales' interest or, or potentially signing for Wales? Who was it who contacted you? And, and can you t talk us a little bit through it? Um... If I remember correctly, it was um, obviously when I started to play a bit well, um, my agent was telling me that I was that he knew I got the Welsh background, and obviously I've told him that I wanted to play for Wales. So obviously he was doing his bit, um, nudging Rob Page a bit, nudging him, saying, hey, "Come and have a look at him." And for me, it was all about just doing my business on the pitch, because the more you, the more I do assists or goals or chances created, it's one of the ones it will make people listen. And for me, 
getting told, I mean, day before, I say on the day of a game, being told you've, you've been um, selected for Wales. It was literally, I remember sitting in a hotel room and literally was speechless. Like my phone was going off. Uh, at some point, I literally had to turn the phone off. And yeah, it was just literally dream come true, literally a dream come true. And I was, literally, I was speechless. I didn't know what to say. Um, but the first thing I did, I called my mum and I had my mum crying to me on the phone and it just made it feel like how much like it meant for me, of course, but for her, it was massive. Oh, well, listen, let's hope you uh, some more happy tears on Friday when you score the winner. Ah, oh, fingers crossed. Cheers, thanks, Lauren. Thank you. Thanks, Lawrence. Beth Fisher? Hey, it's Beth from ITV, you're all right. Uh, firstly, uh, congratulations. Um, talked about you know how you got the call up and how proud you are to get the you know the Wales shirt on your chest but what is the main difference between training with Wales and club can you give us some insight on how it feels it's obviously at the club it's different where different obviously different styles um, different managers so different philosophies but yeah obviously training for a club is amazing obviously coming from where I came from to then playing in a championship it's some boys dream of it so um, I enjoy that. I make sure I enjoy that every single day. But play, training for your country, I feel like it's got that edge because like, you're playing with top players. Not saying I don't play, train with top players at Huddersfield, but you're playing with like, basically the best Welsh footballers in the world. Do you know what I mean? So when I'm coming in and I'm seeing, I open my door of my hotel room and I see Aaron Ramsey straight across me. And it's like, I sometimes have to pinch myself to think, like, is that really, that, is that Aaron Ramsey right there? Like, do you know what I mean? Like, guys who I used to watch on TV or, or play with on FIFA, like, now are opposite me. So, yeah, it's crazy. It's, it's literally, like, I'm going to literally keep saying it, but like, it's literally a dream come true. And for me, it's, I hope it just keeps dreaming, really. In, in that breath, then, you, you were seven years old when Gareth Bale made his debut for Wales. A little bit gutted that he's not here for your first camp. Oh, of course, of course. I was going to ask for his socks, I was going to ask for his tracksuit as well after. But uh, it's, it's gutted for me, obviously, um, watching one of my Welsh heroes, watching him. And uh, you can see how much he is to the country and how much of an impact he does every game. For me, I kind of want that. I want that, like, that love that he has. Like, same as him, like, I'll play for the badge. I'll leave it all out there on the pitch. So, yeah, it's gutted he's not here. But there's still top, top players that can fill his boots, really. Well, you know, the, the league is, you know, the, the World Cup qualifying league is, is still really tight. Obviously, no Gareth Bale. And people in the press, you know, ex-players have said that it is time for the younger players coming through to step up. I know this is your first camp and we don't want to put too much pressure on you. But could you, do, you take, do you like the pressure? Do you want to be that man? Yeah, of course. Obviously, I always, I always, I love a bit of pressure. Because then it's one and ones. When I deliver, it's kind of I told you so. I told you I can do it. So, of course, me. I don't listen to outside information. For me, it's I just be me. I play my game because I know what I can bring to the team. Um, the team can help me. I can help the team. So in a way, it's there's a lot of top players here. A lot of young players that can step up. And obviously, I'd like to put my name up there as well. That can do a job for the for the country as well as the team. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Last question from me. You may have not had the fairy tale journey, but you, you may be having the fa fairy tale tale at ending. So, a little message to any little girl or boy out there who's maybe not going in the direction that they want to go. Just keep believing. There's, I always feel like, my dad always said to me when I was younger, there's always a pathway for everyone. And if you're a young footballer and it don't work out for you, it might not even be football, it might be an office. You know, so there's always a pathway for everyone. So all you've got to do is just keep believing and uh, trust me, everything will align at the right time. Listen, good luck. Thank you. Can I just check with you your mum's name? Uh, Gail. G-A-I-L or G-A-Y-L-E? If 
first one, G-A-I-L. And can I just ask you, I know that um, you're new again to the, the pro game, but I think your head of field teammate Harry Toffler has stitched you up a little bit, hasn't he? Saying about your wing bonus. <laughs> I feel like it's a very common mistake that most people would probably get wrong. But for me, obviously, when the chairman's talking about when you win a game, you get this much money, I honestly thought it's for the whole squad. So I thought, oh, you just split it. So I thought, ha, oh, it's, like, it's not that much. Right? And obviously, when he's telling me, no, that, that's your win bonus. I was like, oh, must be nice. <laughs> Uh, what did I spend it on? I've got a nice PlayStation 5 that's on the way. So the rest goes straight into the savings for the future. Top man, I hope there's a few more on the way. Uh, you're not wrong, hopefully. Thanks, Phil. Phil Cadden? Hi, Sorba. I hope you're well. Um, just wanted to ask about, about FIFA. Did, did the card get changed and did you get an apology from EA Sports? No, unfortunately, it was not changed. So I'll be back on the case very soon. But um, uh, hopefully it gets changed very soon, really. Yeah, what did you make of your stats on there as well? Happy? Oh, no, I was not happy. 80 pace, I don't know who they've been watching on the games, but clearly it wasn't me. I'm definitely a high 85, 86, for sure. Maybe pushing the 90s. The dribbling is a bit... I think the, I think the whole card I wasn't happy about, to be honest. Yeah, oh, massively. Obviously, for me, I don't remember that. I remember it was Phil, but I can't remember his surname, to be honest. But, yeah, it's massive fuel, especially when I, when I started to play. It was kind of, for me, it was try to get to the top and then kind of rub it in a few, few people's faces. So a few people that didn't really believe in me back then, but then want to try introduce themselves again to me when I'm doing well. It's kind of a, yeah, it's just it's one of their ones. I use it. I always remember. Like I'll never forget that day when they told me I wasn't good enough. So yeah, for me, it's a lot of fuel that's really ready to get ready to burn. Yeah. Just lastly, do you think playing for Wales and being on the international stage it is your desire to get back to the Premier League one day? Yeah, of course. Obviously, that's another dream to play in the Premier League. But um, yeah, for me, I'm hoping to come here, make a difference, and then. Who knows what the future has and hold for me. Good luck on Friday. Thank you. Thanks, Phil. And Jordan, do you want to try again? Can I try? Yeah, can you hear me now? Yeah, we can. Thanks. Great. Now, hi, Esau, but just one of your teammates, um, Kiefer Moore, perhaps on a similar route. Have you had a chat with him at all? Because in the summer, I remember um, a video where he went from a lifeguard and all of his teammates. Is that somewhere in a moment that you're going to try and replicate for Wales as well, scoring in a major tournament? Yeah, of course, of course. Obviously, you see how important he is to the country and to the team. And yeah, for me, obviously, I'd love to get that moment where I score for Wales in a major tournament. So yeah, obviously, I'll learn from him, learn from the rest of the team, and hopefully that, that moment becomes a reality. And then just lastly as well, because of the similar route, does it show that um, it doesn't necessarily always have to be uh, going through an academy and you've come through perhaps an unconventional way? Yeah, of course, obviously. Now everyone has seen that the National League, there's a lot of respect being put on it. And um, you see a lot of young boys who play for top academies, playing under 23s, but they're getting no first team experience. And the younger you are, for it to get the experience is, is the way forward right now. So, and obviously you've seen a lot of um, top academies kind of pushing their players towards the National League. So yeah, obviously um, first team football is very important. and. Yeah, the younger the better, really.